Hello, I'm Heidi Hisrick, the creator of Thermia, and today I'm going to show you guys how to play the game. If you already have the game, yay, thank you for your support. Just have it out in front of you when I go through it, and that'll help you to understand it. And if you don't have the game yet, and it looks like fun, uh, check out the link underneath the video, and you can find it on Origami Organelle's website and download and print it right away. So let's look at the game board. This game is all about maintaining homeostasis or a steady state when it comes to body temperature. So the middle of the board represents this steady state and the body temperatures that are normal and healthy for a human. The name thermia comes from the unsteady states when the body gets too hot, which is called hyperthermia, hyper meaning too much, and is commonly referred to as heat exhaustion or heat stroke. And the other end of thermia is hypothermia, when the body is too cold, hypo means below. The object of the game is to keep yourself in homeostasis and to push someone else in the game toward thermia, either hypo or hyper, until they end up where it says game over. Decide how many people will be playing. You can play with two to six and put their little pieces in the middle of homeostasis where it says start here. I think the game is the most fun if you play with four, five, or six people. The next step is to get all of your cards and just shuffle them all together. You should have 48 cards total. After the cards have been shuffled, deal three to each player and you can look at your own cards. Next, decide who will go first. I usually start with the youngest player and then in games after that with whoever lost the last game. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to pretend to be the green player. Every turn starts the same way. You begin by drawing a card, and then you have a choice to either play one of the cards in your hand or draw an extra card. There is a limit of six cards in your hand. At the beginning of the game, I often choose an extra card. The first kind of cards are called personal temperature cards, and you'll find 18 of these in your set. Each of these can be played either on yourself or on another player to change your body's temperature. You want to play these cards to either bring yourself back to homeostasis or to push someone else farther from homeostasis. At the beginning of the game, we're all in homeostasis, so I don't want to move myself. So I'm going to play Clothes Get Wet on one of my opponents. Let's play it on the purple. And that's going to make this person's body temperature go down three levels. So we'll move the purple one, two, three. I've actually knocked that player into hypothermia, and we'll talk about what's going to happen next in just a moment. Now let's see an example of where I would want to play this on myself. So in this scenario, I'm at 102 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm way too hot, so I'm going to play clothes get wet on myself and move one, two, three. Now I'm at a much better temperature. There are also six climate cards in the game. If you play a climate card, it's going to affect every player, including yourself. So you have to think carefully about when you'd like to play these. If we look at this example, I'm green and I'm overheated, so it would benefit me to bring my temperature down, and I can also push purple further into hypothermia. So I'm going to play climate, freezing rain, and I'm going to drop everybody three levels. What that did is bring me right back to homeostasis where I want to be, and now two players are in hypothermia, and purple is getting close to game over. The game is called Thermia, and hypothermia and hyperthermia are the danger zones, because when your body is far from homeostasis, it doesn't function the way it usually does, and the body can easily spiral out of control. For instance, you may have heard that people in hypothermia who are freezing to death sometimes remove their clothing. That's illustrated in the game by rolling the die. So once you move into thermia, hypo or hyper, you're going to see that it says to roll. And for purple, if purple rolls a five or a six, they're going to get disoriented, fall into freezing water, and get colder. So let's roll the die for purple. And it is a five, so now purple would move to the next level where they have to try not to roll a four, five, or six because they'll become unconscious, stay exposed, and get colder yet. That time I rolled a two, so I can stop rolling. But the pink has to roll as well. As long as pink doesn't roll a six, they're okay. But pink did roll a six, so we get one level colder. Keep rolling until you get a number that stops you. So in this case, pink got a two and can stop rolling. 
Sometimes, even if you start up here at 33.3 degrees Celsius, you can end up rolling, 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 and quickly spiraling into game over. That's part of why you want to stay out of Thermia. But it brings us to another category of cards called instant cards. There are 12 instant cards, and they can be used to protect you um, and keep you from ending up in game over. So for instance, if you're in hypothermia, you can play an instant heat pack at any time to stop rolling. Maybe you want to roll once, see how your luck is, but then you roll the wrong number. You can play this heat pack even if it's not your turn. Instant cards can be played at any time on your turn or not, but you don't draw to refresh them. So once you play it, you are down a card. The equivalent of the heat pack for hyperthermia is aspirin, because aspirin can keep your body temperature from rising. Another instant is the rescue. If you're in thermia, this will rescue you and anyone else who's at the same end of the board. So in this scenario, let's pretend you're purple, you're in hypothermia. You can use rescue to rescue yourself, but you will also be rescuing pink. You won't be rescuing orange because they're in hyperthermia. If you play rescue, you move any players being rescued back into homeostasis, and you can put them where you want. So purple might want to put themselves here, but maybe they put pink right here because they don't want pink to be as close to homeostasis as they are. There are a couple other cards that are pretty cool too. Again, let's pretend I'm green and pink plays fall through the ice on me. I really don't want to fall through the ice, so I'm going to do an instant resist. And both of these just get discarded. No one falls through the ice. Even better than that might be instant reverse attack, where I take it and I say, I'm not going to fall through the ice. You're going to fall through the ice. So instead of me going down three levels, pink goes down three levels. And a final option is share the love. So I might say, fine, I'm falling through the ice, but you're going to fall through the ice with me. And I have to move three levels colder, but pink does too. And pink is even more vulnerable. There's a card called negative feedback that you always want to play on yourself because negative feedback acts against what's happening to bring you back toward homeostasis. So it's always going to move you back where you want to go. If I play this right now, I move two spaces back to homeostasis. There's also a card called positive feedback and positive feedback is going to move you away from homeostasis in the direction you're already going if you are in thermia. So I could play this on pink, or I could play it on orange. You can only play positive feedback on someone who is already in thermia because they're vulnerable. And when you play this, this card can end the game very quickly because they have to roll the die, and they have to move that many levels deeper into thermia. So let's try it with pink. Pink has to move five levels deeper, one, two, three, four, five, and then anytime you move deeper, you have to roll if it tells you to, so if I get a three, four, five, or six, the lungs are going to go into respiratory failure. Um, however, pink did not, so pink's going to stop right there. When you're in positive feedback, again, an instant card can save you. So you could do instant resist to stop yourself from having to roll, or you could do an instant heat pack to stop yourself from having to roll. So that's another good time to use these. The final card is called Back in Time, and Back in Time you can use on your turn to search the discard and play any card you want that's in the discard pile. So it's not an instant, but on your turn this is a very powerful card. It is super fun to play in teams. It makes your strategy more complex because you have to protect yourself and your teammate and you have to attack the other team, and that's a lot to balance out. So when we play as a family, we often play me and my husband against our two daughters. And you think of yourself like you're on an expedition with your teammate. You can't let your teammate end up in game over. You've got to protect them too. Consider playing as a team. Uh, my students have found that they really enjoy that. So that's Thermia. If you have any questions at all, please just drop them in the comments below, and I will try to answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.